Nachdem sie über 20 Jahre lang ihr Wissen darüber mitgeteilt hat, wie man ein ausgeglichenes und gleichzeitig spirituelles Leben führen kann, widmet die höchste Meisterin Ching Hai weiterhin ihre Zeit und Anstrengungen dem Ziel, das Leben aller Wesen zu erheben und zu verbessern. In jüngsten Jahren hat sie drei Tierbücher geschrieben und veröffentlicht. Die Hunde in meinem Leben, die Vögel in meinem Leben und die edlen Wildtiere, um der Menschheit die magische Welt der Tiere vorzustellen. Bewegt durch ihre bedingungslose Liebe und ihr überfließendes Mitgefühl für unseren Planeten und alle seine Mitbewohner, nimmt die höchste Meisterin Ching Hai weiterhin selbstlos Einladungen an, um ihre Einsichten und ihre Weisheit für eine friedlichere, edlere und liebevollere Lebensweise mitzuteilen. Sie spricht dazu mit unseren Vereinsmitgliedern und bei Symposiums, Radiointerviews oder Videokonferenzen und dergleichen. Im Oktober 2008 erreicht die Internationale Buchmesse in Frankfurt in Deutschland die höchste Besucherzahl in ihrer 60-jährigen Geschichte. Mehr als 78.000 Besucher, Verleger und Autoren aus aller Welt kamen zusammen, um die neuesten literarischen Werke und Trends zu besprechen und kennenzulernen. An einem der Veranstaltungsorte auf der Messe diskutierten geachtete Gäste aus Deutschland, Frankreich und Großbritannien über das ganz besondere Buch der höchsten Meisterin Ching Hai, Die Vögel in meinem Leben. Das Buch wurde in mehreren Sprachen zum internationalen Nummer 1 Bestseller. Gleichzeitig mit der Premiere des Buches bei der Messe wurde die deutsche Ausgabe von Die Vögel in meinem Leben ebenfalls zum Nummer 1 Bestseller bei www.amazon.de. Die höchste Meisterin Ching Hai war als Ehrengast eingeladen und nahm sich die Zeit, an der Videokonferenz teilzunehmen, die live auf Supreme Master Television ausgestrahlt wurde. Bei der Buchmesse nahmen Journalisten, Regierungsbeamte, Naturforscher, Autoren und Tierschutzaktivisten rege an der Videokonferenz mit der Autorin des Buches teil. Die Leser drückten ihre große Wertschätzung für die Schöpfung dieses einzigartigen Buches aus, das die berührenden Geschichten eines jeden der liebenswerten Vögel der höchsten Meisterin Ching Hai enthält. Wir laden Sie nun ein, die Wiederholung der Videokonferenz mit der höchsten Meisterin Ching Hai anzuschauen, die zur Premiere von Die Vögel in meinem Leben in seiner deutschen Ausgabe am 18. Oktober 2008 stattfand, bei der Internationalen Frankfurter Buchmesse in Deutschland. Ladies and Gentlemen and viewers of Supreme Master Television all over the world, we welcome Supreme Master Ching Hai. Hello, Master. We are here in Germany, Frankfurt, at the International Book Fair and are very excited to have you here joining us via live video conference. Hello, Master. Hello, guten Tag. Wie geht es Ihnen? Wie geht es alles, Leute, die schönen Leute? <laughs> Thank you all of the beautiful people for coming today. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Master. The Supreme Master Ching Hai, we know you're extremely busy, and therefore we really appreciate your kindness to join us today on the release of the German and French version of your book, The Birds in My Life. I just want to thank everybody who uh, organized this uh, event, and I thank all the guests for their precious presence at the venue. First of all, we can give you some more information, Master Ching Hai, about the sales of your book in Germany. We are very pleased to tell you that the book, Die Vögel in meinem Leben, reached ranking number one in sales on Amazon.de since Thursday this week. Wow! Congratulations! Wow! <laughs> That's a good news. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, all of you who are involved in this dedication. Thank you so much. And uh, my birds will thank you. Thank you so much. They will be very happy, the birds. They will bless you. <laughs> thank God you. bless you. Yes, the birds are the big stars here. Oh. Our first distinguished guest today is Dr. Rima Morel. She's the founder and director of Animal Sanctuary and Charity on the Isle of Skye in Scotland, the Living Ark. She gained a degree in anthropology from Cambridge University and a PhD in geography at University College London, where she specialized in Hawaiian culture and beliefs. Dr. Morell is a member of the Dr. Healer Network oh. and the Scientific and Medical Network. In wow. addition, she's the author of three spiritual books about Huna, the ancient wisdom and spirituality of Hawaii. It is our honor to have you here with us today, Dr. Morell. Thank you. Yeah, it's my honor, <laughs> Dr. Rima. Thank you very much, and greetings to you, Supreme Master Ching Hai. My question is, the work the Supreme Master is doing is vitally important to aid the animals. How much tremendous love they must have for us to agree to be reincarnated into the world, to be treated the way they are in, in an unprecedented number over the last couple of generations on Earth billions being killed, a sign of how far we have split off from our feelings and our true core of light. I feel emotional when I see the innocent faces of the lambs in the trucks as they are being led to their slaughter. What kind of feeling and color can we best send them as they are transformed into light. I'm in a deep sympathy like you are, and uh, there's not much we can do right now except that we can encourage people to be more vegetarian and to disseminate all the information about the intelligence and goodness of the animals. In terms of uh, sending them love before they go for sacrifice, you could send them a clear, crystal pink color into their heart, if you can do that. If not, just send the pink color as a whole to envelop the group, and then they will know that is your love for them. Thank you so much, Dr. Rima, for being such a compassionate person. That helps to elevate the suffering in the heart of the animal already. You can send them pink color, crystal clear pink, pink quartz color. Thank you. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production. Swine flu. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus, blue tongue disease. E. coli. Salmonella. Bird flu mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease or PMWS. Listeriosis. Shellfish poisoning. Preeclampsia. Campylobacter. Clostridium difficile. Diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock. Some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility. Eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Over 1 million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat related cancers every year. 
diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth. Uses up to 43% of the world's cereal. Uses up to 85% of the world's soy. Cause world hunger and wars. 80% cause of global warming. Plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Hysteria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen. Lactose intolerance, plus more. Our next speaker is Mr. Vasmut Raya. He holds a Master of Science in Agriculture and Research Economics, in addition to degrees in Philosophy, Anthropology and Agrarian Policies. Mr. Raya is a freelance teacher in Applied Ethics, Animal Rights, Animal Protection and Environmental Protection Policies. Wow. He is the founder of the Forum Humanum for Animal Protection Politics and is an active member of Tierschutz im Unterricht, a German organization for animal protection teaching in schools. Let's welcome Mr. Wasmut Reyer. Welcome. My Frage is, inwiefern glauben Sie, dass Ihr Buch die Vögel in meinem Leben, das Bewusstsein der Menschen in Bezug auf die Tiere verändern kann und Bücher wie das Ihre dazu beitragen können, die konkrete Situation der Tiere zu verbessern. Auch in Ländern, wo es noch nicht so viele Tierschutz Organisationen gibt. Herr Reier, wir können nur alles hoffen. Ne? We can only hope that everything we do with love will help to elevate the consciousness of humankind and to bring them into the knowledge that animals are living, breathing, loving, intelligent beings, just like us, in different form. We have to begin from home, no? And then from this small beginning, maybe it will become bigger and bigger, and it will reach every corner of the world. I have also written the dogs in my life and the noble wilds, and we are hoping with this small beginning like this, um, the effect will be spreading out like an oil dropping and it will spread out all over the world. Please pray for us, Herr Raya. Vielen Dank für Ihre Liebe für die Tiere. Our next VIP is Andrea Frankrone, a German animal communicator. She opened a center of telepathic communication with animals and her noble aim is to reinforce the respectful coexistence of humans and animals. Welcome, Mrs. Frankrone. Welcome. Ja, zuerst mal danke, dass ich hier sein darf. Und meine Frage ist an Sie, wann, durch welche Erlebnisse, durch welche Erfahrungen ist Ihnen so klar bewusst geworden, dass die Tiere und die Menschen 
in der Schöpfung den gleichen Wert haben. Vielen Dank, Herr Frankhorn. Uh, durch Meditieren, eh? <laughs> Through Meditation, I have realized the sameness of all beings and uh, the inner connection between all of us. We came from the same essence. It is still foreign to some humans because we are disconnected with our real selves, with the essence of ourselves, which is the same essence as other beings like animals. Thank you. Vielen Dank für Ihre Frage und Ihre Interesse. Sie wissen schon, weil Sie sind auch ein Tiere Kommunikator. Ne? Sie wissen alles. <lacht> Sie wissen, was ich sage. Sie fragen nur für die anderen Leute. Nicht wahr? Ganz herzlichen Dank. Das ist so schon, das spricht mich hier ja ganz, ganz groß an und ich bin so glücklich, dass ich Sie kennenlernen darf. Und das ist so für meine eigene Arbeit für ja und mit den Tieren eine riesengroße Bereicherung. Danke, danke, danke. Ich wünsche Ihnen alles gut und die Tiere, dass sie helfen. Alles gut. Unter Gott, Gottes Schutz. Vielen Dank. Our next honored guests are Mrs. Sigrid Wellmann, Mrs. Christa Rust and Mr. Volker Arndt and Mr. Jürgen Gerlach. Welcome, also welcome. Here. All are members of German Animal Protection Party and will jointly pose a question. Um, the party with the German name Mensch Umwelt Tierschutz is a young political party in Germany which aims to enforce animal rights in policy making on the national and European level. It is part of their program to encourage vegetarianism or veganism and to fight to abolish cruelty toward animals in any form. We are very honored for you to join us today, sir and madams. Thank you for coming. Ja, vielen Dank. Tiere verdienen Respekt, so wie sie es sagen und so wie sie es geschrieben haben. Ja, aber Tiere haben Rechte. Auf diese Rechte müssen wir vor allen Dingen hinweisen und sie durchsetzen. Welche Möglichkeiten gibt es, diese Rechte einzufordern? We need more work, sir. We need more work and we need the blessing of the government, the media and everyone on this planet. Until they recognize that animals have feeling, have pains, have sorrow, have intelligence and have soul within themselves, just like human. We still have a long way to realize your wish and many people's wish so that we have the rights for the animals. But we are working, we are working and we continue working toward that end. Thank you for all your care and protection for the animals and your dedication. May God bless your work. Thank you. Let us now welcome Mrs. Elaine Kibaro, a singer, songwriter and author who is well known in France since the 70s. Mrs. Cabarro sings about peace and tells of a bright future that brings hope into our heart. She has organized concerts of peace in Paris and all over France and many celebrities have supported her. Her next big concert, ONU 2009 of Peace, is in Tunisia. It is our great pleasure to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome. I'm sure that animals work with us. I feel that when I prepare uh, my show, I would like to know how to communicate more easily with them. You want to communicate telepathically with your cat, <laughs> your animals. Okay, first begin with your cat, yes? 
you could sit with your cat quietly at night, like before they go into sleep, and just uh, caress them like you always do, still your mind, and ask the cat to tell you something. We must quiet our mind to listen. Ask the cat to tell you something, or ask the cat a question, and try to receive what the answer that comes into your mind at that time. With this practice, you will slowly pick up. Maybe not so clear answer in the beginning, but if you keep doing it, you will get the answer. Another thing is, you could also uh, maybe learn it with uh, one of the animal telepathic communicators, meaning the person who could speak to the animal telepathically. There's one next to you. <laughs> Andrea Frankron, she's in Germany. Yeah, maybe you can learn it from her how in the beginning and she will teach you something. Then you have to try it yourself. It's a very good practice. <laughs> You'll be amazed what the animals tell you telepathically. You will be amazed the knowledge that they will impart it to you. And you will love them more and more and more all the time. Good luck, huh, Miss Ellen Kibaro. Good luck with the animals. Telepathic communication. And congratulations. And I wish you all the best for your 2009 Conscious of Peace in Tunisia. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are beautiful also. <laughs> Next, as an invited guest, we have Mrs. Anke Domberg. She's a holistic veterinarian who practices alternative healing methods, including traditional Chinese medicine and kinesiology. Her great love for animals since her childhood compelled her to study many kinds of animal and progressive and gentle healing methods for animals. Very good. She's a specialist in an animal end-of-life care, helping them and their caretakers to go through the different steps of the transition consciously and acceptingly. Mrs. Domberg believes that death is an integral part of all of our lives, and that animals should be consented the right to die in dignity with just as much love and care as we would give to our own human family members. That's right. Welcome, Mr. Sander. Hello, Dr. Anke Dombia. First, I want to say hello and thank you for the invitation. I have a quite short question. My question is, how do you witness the transformation of dying animals? <sighs> Dr. Domberg, like all animals' uh, friends, it's difficult for me, even though I know where they are going, and I know where they are going is even better than where we are, but uh, I love my animals. So if my pets die, I'm very happy for them. I meditate for them. I pray for them to get into a higher consciousness, higher still, even though they're already high. I wish them all the best and send them going with love. But uh, one of my dogs died recently, not really recently, but for me it is I still yesterday. Even with all this knowledge, I still miss them so much. <laughs> and I feel that they are still around. But when we uh, witness uh, our pet dying or animal dying, we should send them all the love we can and the best prayer and the best wishes. Thank you, Dr. Domberg, for what you've been doing, sending the animals to go into the better world with all the love and comfort. God bless you. The next question is from Mrs. Jasmine Debo. She's the co-founder and chair of Animals Count, a political party um, for people and animals. In May 2008, she contested the London Assembly elections, which was the first time a political party for the animals has contested any UK election. Right. 
encouraged by the results, they are now focusing on the European parliamentary elections 2009. Thank you so much for coming so far, Mr. Go. Thank you. Welcome, thank you Mr. Bo, much. and congratulations. I would like to thank you for the invitation to be here. And I also have a very short question for you. When and how did you become inspired to address issues of global warming, conservation and animal protection? Good question. <laughs> thank you for coming. Since young, I have already have love for animals. You, know, you can refer to some of my poems like the piglets, dogs, and the chickens, etc. When I was trying to talk for these animals. But I had no voice at those times when I was younger. And even recently, I still didn't think that anyone would even listen. But uh, since I knew we had only a few years left to change the climate issue and it was urgent so I try my best with my dedicated and noble people in my group to uh, try to voice this issue and hoping that I can contribute a little part of saving our planet and uh, helping the animals and saving our co-citizen human. Of course uh, I'm not doing as fast as I like and we rely on people like you and uh, others out there who are great animals lovers and also have great concern for the planet. We thank you for all your work and uh, good luck with your election in European Parliament. I wish you all the best <laughs> and continue to help us, help the animals. Thank you so much. God bless you. Mr. Andrew Knight, London-based veterinarian and bioethicist, is the president of Animals Count. Mr. Knight recently completed a PhD demonstrating that animal experiments contribute little to human healthcare advancements. That's right. He speaks internationally on vegan animal diets, animal experimentation, and other controversial topics, and is addicted to vegan cheesecake and books. Welcome, Mr. Knight. <laughs> Thank you for also coming so far. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My question is an issue of concern to so many people these days. It has several parts. Scientists and others consider that global warming constitutes the greatest threat to life that has occurred so far. Would you agree with this viewpoint? And also, would you consider that the potential loss of the diversity of sentient species is um, the loss of the most valuable thing that we have. And finally, uh, what do you think the average person can do that will help most in decreasing global warming and trying to preserve uh, biodiversity here on Earth? Thank you very much. Thank you for coming, Mr. Knight. It's an honour for me to answer your question, even though you have all the knowledge already and you still uh, try to raise this question for the knowledge of uh, others who might not have been informed. Of course, climate change is the worst threat that we have right now for our planet. Everybody who knows about planetary climate change knows about this. It's just that not uh, all of the people know, and it's not all people who do enough to uh, avert this situation. This is worse than war. This is worse than even any uh, physical threat that we can imagine. Now, as you know, and many of the people who are knowledgeable know that uh, vegetarian diet, meaning animal-free product, lifestyle, is the best way, the fastest, to stop our disaster of global warming and the destruction of our planet. Every action provokes a reaction. We all know that. And we all saw what we reap. 
So if we let live the animals, heaven will let us live. That's all I can say. Vegetarian diet, animal-free products, everything to do with animals, we stay away. We have to treat animals with kindness the way we treat our own children and ourselves. Then we have the hope to save the planet. And I'm sure we can save the planet that way. I can guarantee that. If anyone is listening, please stop the cruelty for the animals. Please be a vegan. Please stay away from all animal product and cruelty to human and all beings on this planet. Then we will keep this planet. Not only we will keep this planet, but this planet will become more beautiful, more abundant, more glorious, more happy for everyone to enjoy. Thank you so much, Mr. Andrew. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing, a solution for world hunger. Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year. Half the world's grain supply. Consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production. Reduces pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintains cleaner air. Saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year. Stop 80% of global warming, plus more. Save your life. Be veg. Go green. Uh, we also have some wonderful comments about your newly released and already best-selling books. Christina Strobe, holistic animal practitioner, says, Thank you so much. Touching pictures, and when I glance through the book, I feel its emotional atmosphere. The book emanates love. I wish you all the success and hope you will touch many people so that compassion toward our co-inhabitants will increase. Further, we have Dr. Hildburg Manns with a PhD in natural sciences. She's here and wishes to tell us her comment about the book personally. Welcome, Dr. Manns. Thank you for coming, Dr. Das Buch, Die Vögel in meinem Leben. Um, von der höchsten Meisterin Shanghai ist nicht umsonst Bestseller äh, bei Amazon in den USA, in England und in Frankreich und auch ein Bestseller in Formosa und wie wir jetzt erfahren haben, ganz aktuell auch in Deutschland. Ähm, denn es zeigt uns in einer originellen und einzigartigen Weise die Gefühlswelt der Vögel, die mit der höchsten Meisterin leben. Wir erfahren, wie tief Vögel Liebe und Leid empfinden und wie hingebungsvoll und bedingungslos ihre Liebe und unglaubliche Treue ist. In diesem Buch wird gezeigt, dass Vögel liebevolle Wesen sind, die eine schöne Umgebung brauchen, in der sie gedeihen können. Vögel sind so wunderbar, innen und außen. Dieses farbenfrohe, liebevoll gestaltete Buch ist ein kostbares Geschenk. Ich wünsche mir, dass auch in Deutschland viele Menschen dieses wunderbare Buch lesen und schätzen werden. Danke. Thank you so much. Vielen Dank, Frau Doktor. Vielen Dank. Next, we would like to welcome Julie Lejeu, a journalist from France. Thank you for coming, Ms. Lejeu. Thank you. Good afternoon, Supreme Master. Hello. Uh, I have begun to read your book. And this is a nice present you give us. The world needs guides like you to learn to love and respect all living beings. 
and uh, all the staff of Vegetarian Magazine try to take part in this great mission. We thank you to write such peaceful books which make people sensitive to the gentleness to the animal life. Thank you. Thank you for having such a magazine for the animals. God bless you. God bless you so much. And thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai, as you can see, your book has been much appreciated. Would you please be so kind and share with us how you came to adopt so many birds and how their love changed your life? Ah, <laughs> yes, they changed my life for sure. They make me very busy. <laughs> I was already busy and they make me busier, so that's how they changed my life. <laughs> wow, of course. That was just a, a joke. That is a very little price to pay for the love and the precious knowledge that you get when you are with them. Yes, they love me so much unconditionally. And in return, I don't know how much more I can love them. Every day, every night, uh, when I'm home, I sing to them, I say, I love you more, I love you, I love you every day more, every day more. That's all I can say. They're so beautiful, so beautiful, and so wonderful. Uh, it, not just my birds, all the birds are beautiful. Uh, sometimes I have to stay in a hotel um, because sometimes where I stay is so remote and we don't have internet and we have to contact uh, the whole world with the fast internet. So sometimes I have to stay in a hotel which has the best internet, uh, the fastest connection. And uh, I see some birds who come to visit me even in the hotel, you know, in, in front of my window. And I give them some food and all that. And they just come and love me so much that they even walk into my room. <laughs> I go on my bed and uh, let me feed them from my hands even. And even these birds, they are not my pets, but I also love them so much. You cannot do anything but just love them. You just feel you love them so much, so much. There's no words you can describe this. And the reason I adopted so many birds was it because I love them. I see them staying in a small cages forever and every day they feed them just a sunflower seed because I saw the whole thickness like mountain of flower seeds under their cage and I know that's all they eat. And the birds can't just live on sunflower seeds every day. And so I adopt whatever that is unwanted, you know, the people don't want it. So I bring them home and give them more nutrition and love. And, and in turn, they give me a lot. They give me a lot of knowledge as well concerning animals, which I had no time to think about before. You know, you have to be in contact with animals in order to have all this knowledge, truly. Even though you can know it, but uh, you don't think about it. So if you are with animals, they will give you a lot more knowledge, a different knowledge. Thank you so much uh, for this beautiful event, and I just wish you all the best. And may God bless you, bless you, bless you so much for being good to the animals, and being vegans, and being concerned about our planet. God will bless you so much. Thank you. Master, before we conclude today, we would like to inform you of, of some positive events happening in Germany and in the rest of Europe. Yes. Today we had the honor to have many members of animal protection parties present at our seminar. Yes, I know Thank that. You. Thank Again. you so much. We would like to report that in the early 90s, Germany and England were the first countries with active parliament members that brought animal rights to the forefront of politics. Wow. The European countries that have animal protection parties are Austria, France, Greece, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Spain. Bless. These political parties, which also promote sustainable living and vegetarianism, yes. gain more and more popularity, wow. which is a clear sign that people are aware of the plight of animals and our planet and are looking for leaders that care for the well-being of animals and the environment. In addition, it is apparent that animal rights have become an important part of politics. 
Don't you think that is promising for the future, Master Ching Hai? Yes, very, very positive, very beautiful. And one day we will have humans and animals live together in peace, just like in heaven. Then we can talk to the animals telepathically, communicate with them and let them know our feeling and they let us know their feeling and they will share with us our secret knowledge that some humans don't know. That would be wonderful, it would be wonderful. And bless these countries, bless these countries so much. And one day, every country will have this animal political party, just like human, they need representative. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Supreme Master Ching Hai. We really appreciate your presence with us today and sincerely wish you success with your newly released book, Spreading Love, Compassion for a Glorious Future. Wir möchten auch Ihnen unsere aufrichtige Wertschätzung entgegenbringen. Durch Ihre Teilnahme war diese großartige Veröffentlichung möglich. Nochmal danke für Ihr Kommen. And we would like to remind you to remember to spread the message. To be veg and go green is the responsibility of each individual and single person to save the planet. Let's peace be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless all of you and the world. <laughs> How to Veg for Starters 1. Veg before you shop 2. Go straight to veg section. 3. Get veg recipes. 4. Make new veg friends. 5. Get info about veg benefits. 6. Spread the veg trend. Seven, feel like a saint. Supreme Master Ching Hai.